I kind of like it that way, but I don't like it that much. And I like, guess it's, it's a bad environment for kids to be in. I talk to a lot of people out here, but like it's messy, so I just stay myself from with everybody. I want to grow up fast so I can get away from everything. The Gregory Lincoln Education Center is a school that's in historic Fourth Ward community, also known as Freedmanstown. A lot of our students, 98% in fact, are on free and reduced lunch. Therefore, we have a low SES background. The unique side to a low SES school is that we are also in an area where the city is beautifying this area of town. We have high rises on one side of our school, but on the back area of our school, we have students who are really just trying to make it on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of these students struggle on a daily basis because their parents struggle financially. So they might come to school without food. Lunch might be the only meal they eat during the day. When they go home, they won't have food. Um, right now, I'm trying to work on my behavior because I have a bad attitude. <laughs> but right now, I'm trying to get my grades right and I'm trying to stay out of mess. I want to open up my own restaurant. I call it Zaza Book. It's going to be like gourmet food, so food, like everything we can get. My role as an art teacher kind of turned into a culinary arts and a garden teacher with express purpose into getting our kids to consume more fruits and vegetables, getting them outdoors, getting them moving, and getting the whole school thinking on not just nurturing the cerebral child, but the whole child, the body, the mind, the spirit, the soul. My thing is to show families how to utilize your pantry and utilize what they get in an efficient way, because if they can't do it at home, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna translate in their everyday life. So a lot of food insecure families also live in what's defined as food deserts. And food deserts are technically areas where individuals reside, where the grocery stores are over a mile in distance. And so on this map, you can see the red dot is where um, the elementary school is located. And the green area is the traditional definition of a food desert. If we redefine a food desert to include grocery stores that are over half a mile in distance, then we see that the school is located in a food desert area. Like I never paid attention to how far away different grocery stores are. The nearest grocery store to these neighborhoods are just not as close as they used to be. A long time ago, you could walk to the store. Mom and pop stores was all up and down, or you had a food market with fresh food. Now it's kind of hard. Nobody has a way to get real food. Not only is this area can be considered a food desert, it's also considered an area that has low access to vehicles. Here we have the cultivated classroom, which is our garden, and we have the um, kitchen classroom where we come in and cook everything that we grow in our garden. My kids come in and they get a pretty extensive overview on how to grow their own food, harvest it, take care of it, um, to make transplants. We're planting collet and we're taking the weeds out of the collet. So it, can so it won't kill the weeds. And so the weeds don't take over. Um, I'm planting lettuce. Um, we have to like, separate them in different places and not let them get like, squished together. So they're learning a lot of hands-on science and academically tied things in a way that they don't, it, we, it's not even sneaky, it's just awesome because they're learning the way you're supposed to learn, by doing, by going out. Kids do not learn by just sitting in a book and reading about it. They need to go outside and experience it. Some people are going to be harvesting days, so you got to take the days off. Yeah, you you call it some seeds. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but we need to do which ones? Do we need to do the green ones? The brown ones. The brown ones. Why do we need the brown ones? Because the brown ones got the seeds in it. For open house, we made stone soup. I stayed standing up for 
before I was two feet with her, I was tired, so I'm ready to go home. But like at the same time, it was like it was a great experience for me because I was experiencing what I was going to do when I get older, when I be in my own restaurant. At first, I did not know how to hold a knife, and from transmitting to a real knife, it was kind of hard. But then I got to grasp it because when we was cooking, like you know how when you just hold a knife like that and just start cooking, like that's how you cook chop. But then she showed me how to do it and how to hold my thumbs back so I won't cut none you know, of my fingers or anything. Sometimes we have this little diggy day, so we all, everybody come out, people that don't even go here come out, help out with the garden, we made all this and everything. Dig It Days are awesome because they bring in community business partners as well as families and staff. And it's a time when we all come together and we actually work on the garden together. I just come out here because this is my school and we got a new principal and, we and I help you. him because Ms. Kobe, she help us with the garden so we need to show her love, she show us love. We have our Whole Foods Farmer's Market, you know, where we bring in Urban Harvest and Whole Foods and so we invite the kids to come out, bring in their own produce that they harvested to package it, to advertise, to promote it, to come up with the cost. We have like a 60 foot, two 60 foot tents and there's just lines of kids selling and, and slinging salads and vegetables and it's awesome and it's amazing and all the money goes back to the school gardens or the programs. So food is a priority among food insecure households. The thing is that everybody will have a different definition of what is healthy and what is nutritious. Um, so that's why these nutrition education programs in school are so important to help individuals understand the effects of high fat, high sugar foods on just not our weight, but overall on our health. I decided I wanted to start a girls club as sort of my first thing to kick off since this is my first year here and I really really strongly felt that our girls need some kind of guidance We focus on things like drugs and alcohol tobacco stress management goal setting and decision making as well as diet and exercise the most important and just you know being able to be wise about the choices that you make and the life that you're leading I think it's all about health awareness emotionally, mentally, and physically. One of the things that we want our kids to do is to think big and to really dream for themselves and set big goals. I want to move to LA. I want to open up my own restaurant. I want it to be on the street of Hollywood. Like, you know how Applebee's is, like they have like the appetizer, then they have like the dessert. It's gonna be like that. But it's gonna be like, it's gonna have soul food, then it's gonna have gourmet food, then it's gonna be flipped to dessert. But after I leave Gregory Lincoln for a great year, I might go to, I don't I don't know what high school. Ms. Carby, she want me to go to Jefferson Davis, but I don't know. After I graduate high school, I might go to a culinary institute. One of my favorite quotes is by an African-American writer by the name of James Baldwin. James Baldwin stated that these are all of our children who will benefit by or pay for what they become. You know, I think sometimes in the in an education system, we want to push, 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 but kids need time to soak it in and just to slow down. And also my best conversations with kids have been moments in the garden when they're working. You know, those conversations are the things that actually are golden and you can't get those when you're pushing kids all the time. You have to have teachable moments where it's calm, relaxed, and we're cooking and we're talking and we're in the garden and we're putting things together and we're growing and we're looking at things and we're taking a deep breath and looking around, you know, looking up, no phones, no plugged in, we're not plugged into that, we're plugged into each other and to nature and to what we're putting into our bodies. All they really want is you. So I think it's very important to be in touch with the planet. Uh, we speak about saving the planet and going green, 
But if the children don't know what comes from the earth and how beautiful it is, how will they do that, you know? So with this project, I want them to like, come out in the garden, touch the earth, feel the earth, see what comes out of the earth, so they'll be excited to protect it. I think it's important to garden because we promote eating healthy around here. and We want our youth to be healthy as well as, you know, not only the kids at Gregory Lincoln, but the community as well. So it's a great way to get the community out here. Don't you have my Savior calling Who will go and work the day The harvest is right and the fields are waiting Who will bear the shelves away Here around my Lord won't you send here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, won't you send me? Here am I, Lord, send me.